Hey guys, my name is Eric Scott, and I wanted to share with you this video, which is a sort of response to Ken Trammell's uh, excellent Shader Forge series on BlenderCookie.com. Uh, I've been going through those tutorials, and uh, I've been following along uh, with them pretty much, you know, word for word, putting in all the same values, doing everything exactly the same, just uh, you know, just for the purposes of making sure I'm doing everything right. And I uh, hit a few stumbling blocks, and I noticed a few other people were having the same issues as well. Uh, and I wanted to show you uh, what those issues were and uh, a way to uh, just make your code, uh, or not rather code, but your node setups uh, a lot better. Uh, it's, it's, um, it has to do with the version number, uh, Ken Trammell in the old, uh, at least in the, uh, in his, uh, the earlier Shader Forge series videos, he was using 2.7, which is what I have open here. And, um, and things have changed in 2.71, which was the uh, version of Blender I was following along with. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to open up uh, my test scene in, uh, in this older version of Blender here. Uh, I'm going to close the preview. I'm going to turn on real-time rendering. There we go. And I'm just going to delete the uh, car paint shader that I was working on. Uh, and just for this demonstration, I'm going to take the um, glossy shader and I'm also going to add an input value node and an input RGB node. So at certain points uh, during the tutorial, uh, Ken Trammell would control, I believe it was even a, it was the roughness of uh, a glossy shader uh, using uh, some sort of color value. And it wasn't from an RGB node, it was from a mixed RGB node. But uh, the same thing applies here. And uh, uh, First of all, it's worth noting that uh, you know you can control the roughness of this in several ways. You can obviously control it right here by just typing in 0 .002, uh, but you can also type uh, whatever you want here. I'm just going to use the same value, plug that in, and you get the exact same result over there. Um, alternatively, you can switch to HSV uh, color picker mode in the uh, in the color picker in the RGB node. Set the value to 0.2. Uh, which, by the way, is the same as setting all those to 0.2 and dropping that in the roughness. And again, you get the same result. And that's great. That's exactly what you'd expect. Uh, you know, you have multiple ways of controlling this. This gives you, you know, by, by allowing you to control this roughness, you have ways of controlling uh, how your shader looks based on other, uh, other information coming into, uh, into the shader. And that works very nicely for, uh, you know, in, in, in large uh, node setups. So let's see how this works in uh, the current version of Blender. I'm just going to open that up real quick, drag it over here, and uh, close that. And we'll just open uh, the same scene. Select that, close the preview, enable real-time rendering, delete the car paint, and we'll add in our glossy RGB node and value node. Plug that into the surface. Change and uh, just to show you um, the value node, nothing's changed with the value node. Uh, you can plug the value node into the roughness, and you get the same result that you did before. Uh, what has changed is the RGB node. If I type in my point two that I wanted here and uh, plug this in, we get a much different result. We have a much shinier. Uh, uh, object than we did before. So what happened? Well, it's it's not when when this comes in, it's not looking at this value. It's looking at these values, and these values or is the value here and the values here are no longer mapped one to one. And I'm not sure why they changed this. Uh, I'm sure there was a reason for it, but. Uh, and I'd like to know what the what the mapping is, and if anybody does know, uh, feel free to tell me because I'd I'd really like to know. But uh, at this point in time, uh, I I just don't. So, you know, why is this important? And uh, well, as I said uh, in in the tutorial, uh, Mr. Tremell was passing in uh, some color information into a mix RGB node, um, and using that to control values. And I'll show you a very similar setup to what he did. He used a uh, what's under color mix RGB, and then he did uh, inputs layer weight. So he did something like this, 
and the idea was if the object, if the geometry of the object is facing you more directly, you're going to perceive a, a higher, uh, higher roughness, and the object is going to, the reflections are going to be a little blurrier, and around the edges, you're going to perceive a slightly lower roughness, and the uh, the reflections are going to be much sharper. So he did this by taking the facing values, which was like the uh, which looked like this, which had white near the edges, and, uh, and the areas that were facing you were dark, and he was going to use that information to control the roughness. And uh, so to, to control those roughness values, you'd experiment with a couple values here, and then he'd put those values in here. So for this, which was the black end, he liked 0.1, and then let's just say we liked 0.01 for here. Uh, and uh, I didn't want that in color, so I wanted that in roughness. But the problem was that's that's much sharper than we wanted it, and it ended up using these values. So how do you change this? Well, you could obviously just change the values here, but that's annoying. You have to dive in here, and then you have to change three values, and that's annoying. So instead, I would just recommend connecting up uh, value nodes like this, um, and this is how I like to do things, uh, and it makes a lot of sense because you're not using this mix RGB node for RGB values. Uh, you're using it uh, to control uh, numeric values for roughness. So why not use an input that requests numeric values? And uh, beyond the color picker um, being different now, uh, there are several other advantages. The obvious one is uh, it's now just one click away. If you want to change this value or experiment, you just have to click once and type in your value. Uh, before, you'd have to dive in here, switch to HSV as you, if you weren't already in there, and then uh, click here, change your value, and then then leave. Uh, this, this is much cleaner, and it requires less clicks. Uh, additionally, uh, the node setup conveys this meaning anyway. Uh, if if you had a very large node setup with a lot of these a lot of these situations where you would have a uh, mixed node uh, uh, trying to determine or uh, you know to determine two values and send that off somewhere else, uh, and you had that in a number of places, but it looked something like that, you might be wondering at first glance, why am I mixing these two colors? What are those doing for me? And you it you'd have to look and see, oh yeah, I'm actually using those colors as values, whereas with uh, with these nodes connected, you know immediately, ah, yes, I'm, I'm mixing these two values together. I need, I'm, I'm, I have some sort of, some of, uh, some sort of variation between these two values, and uh, I want to be able to switch between them. So there's that, and uh, this is a very common thing uh, for programmers to do. They'll, uh, uh, computer programmers will define a variable uh, ahead of time before they need it. And so they'll, they'll give the, the variable some meaningful name. And then when they call a function that needs to use that value, they'll put in the variable name rather than uh, typing in the value they want directly into the function. And uh, th that has, you know, in a computer program that has very large implications and it's, it's considered good practice. It's not quite as important, obviously, uh, when making shaders for, you know, for, for artistic purposes, but. Uh, it, it's still cleaner, and in my opinion, it's, it's much better practice. Uh, if you do want to give them meaningful names, that's very easy. You can either put it in a frame node, or just uh, come over here to the label in the properties pane, and uh, just give it uh, a name, like roughness, and uh, it'll just help convey that a whole lot better. So, basically, if you take nothing else from this tutorial, if if uh, or this video, if you're using if you're using a mix node or some other node and you're using the color inputs as values later down the road in the node chain, uh, pass them in as values. Uh, it'll make your node setups more readable to you and the uh, and whoever else might be viewing your code and it also uh, avoids any complications with the color picker which has changed and yeah it's 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 just easier. Basically it's easier. So that's all I'm going to say. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this short little video. Uh, my name is Eric Scott, and I will see you next time.